You're listening to another episode of Last Night's Coffee with Chuck and John. What's going on, Night Shifters? We're back. It's episode number 1,567. That's what it feels like. Actually, it's not. It's episode 132. Bingo. I'm Chuck. That's John. I'm John. Yep. It's race day. Hey. The Daytona 500 got pushed because of weather. So they're racing on a Monday. All right. What time does it start? Four o'clock. Oh, ah, right on, man. They You're going to get to watch most of it. Yeah, I get to watch a good bit of it. They're, they had two uh, of the track drying trucks crash this morning. So we got oh. that going for us. <laughs> oh, jeez. So it's a disaster out of the gate already. Yeah, it's just like, how do you crash track drying equipment? I've Jeez. seen cars crash into dra- track drying equipment, but I've never seen track drying equipment crash into each other. <laughs> like, I bet dude was looking at his phone like, they ain't going to believe this crap. I'm out here drying the racetrack. <laughs> yeah, I finally get to dry Daytona. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sucks, man. So that... uh. It gets pushed back, and still, they uh, they they crash into each other. They manage to make a, an even more of a disaster out of it. Yeah, the good thing is the race don't start for another, what, four hours, three hours, something like that? Yeah, yeah, we've got a little bit. Yeah. I'm out here well, on the porch. If you notice, the background is different. I had to get I some did. fresh air. And it's beautiful out today, man. It is. It's quiet. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about heading to um, the McIntosh Reserve, going out to Carroll County after this podcast, taking the kids out there. Uh, they got the week off of school, right? So um, Go find just going out there and enjoying it, you know? What if you run into a ghost of an Indian? Are you going to talk to him? I would try. Would you be scared? Terrified. What if they're not a ghost, though? What if they're, uh, what do they call it when they... Remote viewing. What if they are remote viewing you from their time? What will you tell them? I will tell them, oh, gee, sorry was the first thing that came to mind. But, but they don't know this yet. They don't know anything bad's going to happen. Right, right. They're just sitting around a bonfire right now. Yeah, eating peyote. Like, <laughs> yeah. Eat around here. They probably don't got some mushroom. Uh, turkey, here. coyotes. Yeah. That's what they would eat around here, right? Yeah, but what what would they what psychedelic would they take to trans? Oh, definitely stuff? mushrooms, mushrooms for sure. So they they've got their little magic mushroom. They've transcended to twenty twenty four, and they meet John Lasky. And you tell them, don't trust me. Don't trust <sighs> the guy that looks like me. When he I don't up. know. Dude, the more I learn about it, the more I think it was almost inevitable. It's inevitable. You know what I mean? Like, the more I learn about it, it's like, it doesn't matter how much they resisted. It, it didn't matter. I mean, the Comanche were some of the fiercest warriors you could have ever found. They were still conquered. Yeah. You know, um, the numbers were just tremendous and their numbers were decimated the native american numbers were decimated 90 percent of their population died in 200 years well it's hard to fight if you can't eat yeah yeah exactly and then we're we're the white men traveling around killing all the buffalo mm-hmm. um which was their main which was the comanche's main food source for sure yeah slowly going the way of the buffalo man mm-hmm. but um, I don't know what I would tell them. I don't know. I have no great words. I think I would tell them, um, you know, hello. <laughs> I think I think I just want to talk to them. I think I just want to be like, sup, man. If I could communicate with them, I'd just be like, I love you. Talk you to, to sign, me. Tell me what's going on. They'd kill you. What if he tries to kill you? They might. I mean, but he can't because he's really not there. Right. That's the thing. Like if it was just this apparition type of situation, or are you saying like he could actually harm me? I don't know. I don't know how it works. 
I don't know how astral never, projection works. I've either. never astro projected, so I'm not sure what <laughs> what your capabilities are when you astro project. Yeah, me either, man. I got nothing good for a Native American, though. I can tell you that. I would want to know what they have to say, dude. He has more to say than me. He'd say the earth and the stars <laughs> and the sun. Grandpa Moon. <laughs> Grandpa Moon. <laughs> he don't howls eat. at the sun. You would tell him, don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> I tell him don't wrestle Abe Lincoln. That's what I tell don't, him. Don't wrestle Abe Lincoln. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get yeah, into don't that. Mess with that guy. We'll get to that later on in the show when um, we hit on uh, so President's we, Day. Speaking of which, Happy President's Day, man! Oh, it is President's Day. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, are we, we got that government holiday. Are we celebrating all the presidents? Um. Well, didn't they smack it between Lincoln and Washington's birthday or something like that? Yeah, but do we have to celebrate all the presidents? That's what it says. Like even Monroe. <laughs> with his doctor. Are you saying not all presidents are worthy of celebration? I don't think any any presidents are worthy of celebration. <laughs> oh man, what is this country coming to? Maybe, maybe George. Which which George? Oh yeah, uh, Washington. Oh Washington. okay okay the first one. Yeah, the first one, because he's like, you know what? Yeah, I'll do. You know, I don't really want to do this, but I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, all the ones after that chose to go into it. That's true. So they're all scumbags. <laughs> so I do think there is something to that reluctant leader, right? Um, like someone who doesn't necessarily want the power, who just... Yeah. It's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. I mean, think about, use Ricky Bobby as an analogy. Yeah. All right. They said, who wants to go fast? He said, I won't go fast. <laughs> Look how screwed up he was. <laughs> yeah, that but he went fast. Presidency. That's the presidency <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> and they do go fast in there, man. They age like that. Yeah. It's it's really scary how quickly some of these presidents age, except for except for DJ. You know what I'm saying? DJ T well, seems to handle it. It's because he was already old. <laughs> this stuff just rolls off his back, I, man. He takes like you nothing. Look at, you look, you look at Biden. He hadn't aged like normal presidents do, <laughs> because you know he was already old as dirt when he got in there. I feel like he was slightly more mentally competent before. Like on a scale of one to ten, he went in as a two and come out as a one? Maybe. Slightly. Slightly. Slightly more competent. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You know, we're, we're in the middle of a presidential election year right now. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm going to vote for... I'm going to do a write-in. Ooh. Do you care to share who your write-in will be? Um, I think it will be Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> You're going to write in Tony Hinchcliffe for press. I mean, if he can, if he can manage kill Tony, <laughs> he can, uh, he could manage the country because that, that's a that really is, good point. That is a wild show. That is a wild show. It's off the rails. And he does. He keeps it under control. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine the crowds they get and how wild some of those people are in the crowds. And yet, he keeps them tame during the show. Yeah. So I was watching the newest one this weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bert showed up. It was oh, Bert, wow. Bobby Lee, and Little Lester. Oh, okay. And... Bert wasn't even supposed to be on there. He just happened to be there. And Bobby Lee goes to pee and he comes back out and he's like, uh, Bert, your wife said we're on a date. Get off stage. <laughs> so Bert's like, oh, oh, yeah. It leaves. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He, he makes an appearance on Kill Tony uh, while on a date. Yeah. 
That sounds just like Bert. That is, that's a very Bert thing to do. <laughs> but anyway, that was that was just part of my weekend was watching Kill Tony, which it was pretty pretty interesting because Mary Beth got to laughing and uh, it was I told her your theory about Hinchcliffe. Yes, and she watched about ten minutes and said, "Yep." <laughs> she agrees. She's like, "Definitely." Yeah, for sure. For sure. When you look at it through the scope, you just got to look at it through the right scope. Yeah. yeah. You know what so, I mean? Um, what did you do this weekend? Birthday party? Yeah, I had a birthday party for Leah, man. Um, it, it was it was a lot of fun. Whole family. We didn't have it at our house. We kind of oh. put our foot down as a family a little bit. We're not having every single party at our house. So um. <laughs> y'all, y'all need to buy an event space. <laughs> and for the other three weeks out of the year that y'all don't have a birthday, <laughs> y'all could rent it out. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a not a bad idea. Just go in and buy an event space and be like, look, there's three weeks out of the year that we don't need it. So we can make a dollar that week. <laughs> y'all, y'all like the the Ted Nugent of uh, kids over there. Y'all just whacking them and stacking them. <laughs> oh man, I hope my brother in law is listening to this episode because it's so true. We do. We just whack them and stack them, dude. They just keep stacking up. And look, now we're getting close to where some of these kids are are not that far off from reproducing age themselves. What are y'all going to do? Like they're start like the oldest one is 18 or no. Well, technically married in. So, I mean, the oldest are o- over 18. They're 21, 25. And then, um, you know, uh, the youngest by blood is like 18. So like, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. We're they're They're there. So will, will, will there be birthday parties? That the whole family has to attend, excuse me, for the whole, like for the grandbabies, for the next generation, while the other generation is still trying to figure it out. I guess, man. Like I guess we're going to have, stack, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, it, you're correct. That, that That is a really accurate description of that family. Whack them and stack them, dude. I mean, like, like, couldn't y'all just, didn't y'all try the once a month thing one time? Ah, uh, kind of. I've suggested like the seasonal birthdays, but I get rejected because I feel like four times a year getting 30 something people together four times a year is is realistic. But when we try to do it like every other weekend, sometimes it's and, and, and expect all 30 something people to show up. It's like uh, that's not going to happen. People have lives. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a that's a big deal. And if they, <laughs> well, they they didn't come to my party, but they come to this one. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want that. You don't want that. So I suggested like spring, summer, fall, and winter birthdays, but I was rejected. And I understand people would feel way less special, way less honored when it becomes like a seasonal thing. It's like uh, it, it becomes nothing a, about them. A skating rink. What? A skating rink. I need to buy one? Yeah. I got that one right around the corner from my house, that man. That could be y'all's venue. Because <laughs> they can make money during the week. <laughs> they got a sweet playground there and laser tag. Why does a skating rink need something other than a skating rink? That's just what they have, man. Our skating rink. It's has... for like the really little kids. So like they have a height restriction on the playground. I guess okay. it's for like the kids who there's no chance they're going to be able to, to skate. Our, skate. our skating rink had a corner for that. Had a corner for that. Yeah. <laughs> what was yeah. in that corner? The little people that weren't big enough to get out there on the big ring. <laughs> yeah. So, like, did they just have like some blocks, like some Lego blocks or something no, thrown out there? They, it was a uh, surface, a skating surface. Yeah. But it was a corner that had walls around it. So you could put them in there about the size of my porch. Mm-hmm. And they could just bounce off of each other. Oh, so they could wear skates. Yeah, the little bitty skates. But they're just whack, whack, whack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like in kindergarten, you'd have to go over there, and then you'd graduate out to the big 
to the big one. So the last time we went to the skating rink, I had a bit of an issue because you had to rent the little, uh, like the little walkers, you know what I'm the saying? Way. The little helpers. They have helpers now. So they give you like old person walkers with That's tennis bull balls, crap, on. man. Yeah. You fall and you get back up and you learn how to skate. <laughs> well, like my girls see that who don't, who didn't know how to like skate really well. They well, see they that and they're like, Oh, we want that. Right. Mm. Cause they see the crutch. So they want to use the crutch, but the crutch costs money. Say, so, yeah. look, you get out there, you skate, you learn how to do it. I could go skating tomorrow. <laughs> you I haven't done it in how long? How, when was the last time you went skating? Probably 20 years. I challenge you to go skating tomorrow. I don't think they're open anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you gotta, When you got to bite the bullet. When the rubber so, meets the road. So last time I went skating, I was like, I got money. I didn't have much money, but I'm an adult now. <laughs> and I'm going to rent speed skates. Oh, Lord. That was one of the worst decisions <laughs> of my life. Them things will get away from you. <laughs> yeah, man. You got to be really careful with those things. Yeah, man. Like you're sitting there. You could be sitting there talking, standing on the carpet. And next thing you know, you're on your butt. I just said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah skating rinks are a thing of the past for me man i have no business in a skating rink now i know we have a listener who's very much into skating and he has like traveled the state going to skating rinks really which is pretty impressive yeah shout out kevin man um uh big props to you him and his wife will go and find like couples skate nights and be a part Strawberry? of skate teams yeah no way i didn't know he was a skater yeah, man, he hits the skating rings, dude. We'll talk to him about it at the uh, Uno tournament for sure. Is he a skater boy? Oh man, I wonder. Mm. He was kind of he was a bit of a player. I know he was. He had to have been in his day. Yeah, so we, you know, I liked I liked going to the skating rink. That was fun. Yeah, good times, man. Did you ever go to a lock in? Oh, man. At a skating no, rink? No, I didn't, but the power went out one time and I got in trouble. <laughs> they got in trouble? No, I got in trouble. Why? Because I was making out with some girl and my mom came in there and got found me. <laughs> because the power went out? Yeah, because they wouldn't let us out. Their parents had to come in. <sighs> and all you had on was like the emergency lights. Oh. And fire trucks were out in front of it like why were fire trucks out in front of it i don't know what's going on outside i'm just inside yeah i'm an inside person <laughs> at that point you know i'm not an outside person at, at that time in space you know what i'm saying i don't right. know what's going out on outside the four walls of the daggum uh skating rink i'm just inside and i was told right. not to go outside so right <laughs> So, you know, and then that Gen X mentality, like there is nothing else than what I'm doing right now. No, no, we're just outside. We're inside. Yeah, we're inside skating. Moment, we're inside skating. There's no power and there's no music. Right. So somebody's like, turn in your skates. So we turn in <laughs> our skates. But you and this girl had snuck off to a dark corner or something. We what was the, the give me the corner. gist. Give me the rundown. Well, man. I don't what even happened? think we were in a dark corner. I think we were leaning up against the wall. <laughs> you were in like one of the emergency lights, like in the light. No, off that the would side be the, light. <laughs> the romance of an emergency light at the skating rink. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, geez. But then mom's <laughs> like, we'll get in the car and she's like, she just don't say much. She goes, what was her name? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> a romance by the emergency still, light, man. Still don't know her name. <laughs> you Never don't even know her name. name. Was she in your grade? I don't know. I didn't know who she was. She didn't go to my school. Look, we need to get this out into Griffin. If this was you, if you, what skating rink was it? There's only one skating rink in Griffin, dude. Well, actually, at the time, there was two. But there was only one safe one. <laughs> okay. So was there was only there. one skating rink. He was there. You were making out with him. 
If huh? you were making out with Chucky D. <laughs> we got to find out, though. We got to find this out, man. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> it don't uh, I'm gonna clip this up. This is getting into. This is getting made into a short. No, I can't. And do I am. I. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a, uh, you know, the the eighth grade. I remember that. I was in eighth grade. I know that. Tell moment. me. Tell me the skating rink. Tell me the name of it. You didn't say. Griffin Skate Inn. I said the name of it. Oh, okay. Griffin Skating. Griffin Skate Inn. Oh, Griffin Skate Inn. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Perfect. Like you were going to skate out? You can't skate out of that place. There was a sheriff. So you were what, 14? Yeah, probably. Was this your first kiss? No. What was your first kiss? Tell me your first kiss. We've, We've never had this, this discussion on the pay, on the bag on show before. No way. This, yes, we have. Oh, so this is old news? This is old news. Okay. Dang it. Yeah, this is old news. This All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> let's see. What's next on the notes? <laughs> we got an Oxen Ford Racing update. Oh, we didn't talk about my tree. Oh, that's right. You planted a tree this weekend, right? I planted a tree this weekend. What kind of tree? Uh, it's one that the Catawba worms like. You know what a Catawba worm is? No clue. It's a like a little moth caterpillar larvae thing. Okay. And they'll they'll they're attracted to it, but you can use them for fish bait. Oh, sweet. But my granddad had one, so we'd go check for worms on it. Mm-hmm. So now I got one and me and Chloe can go check for worms on it. That's awesome, man. It's you perfect. you had told me you had mentioned planting a tree uh for you and her to go check out. Yeah. And I didn't know what tree I was going to get and what I was going to plant. And right. they were giving away free trees at the library this weekend. And they happened to have those. I was like, I'll take that one. I didn't know what it was at the time. I'm like, it just looks neat. Yeah, so, that's perfect, man. So I got a tree now. Nice. So nice. Did you tree. dig the hole and everything? I dug the hole. I put it in there. Charlie poured the water in the hole. I put the dirt in the hole. Okay, good. You didn't make Charlie do the bulk of the work. Not this time. Usually, if there's a tree to be planted, he's the one that plants it. Right. That's why I was asking. Um, you know, but I wanted to plant this one. That's cool, man. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm looking for it. What do you, do you name the tree, or do like is it just you and Chloe's tree? It's just Grandpa's tree. Grandpa tree. Oh, the Grandpa tree. I got the you. Grandpa tree. Um. I guess it might not just be Chloe. You know, you never know how many grandkids we're going to end up with. That's true. That's true. And you can check that tree with, you're not going to get a, another tree per grandchild. No, 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 no. <laughs> just one tree. Yeah. I, no. Well, we'll <laughs> if they need their own tree, we'll go find a tree. We're like, Here, you like this one? <laughs> this is your tree. Now. This is your pine tree. It's good for <laughs> growing. <laughs> Little Bobby, this is your pine tree. I hope you like it. We're it's it good for growing and falling on your truck. Yeah, we're gonna cut it down in about twenty years and make a house out of it. We own yeah. <laughs> or a pallet. Pallet. <laughs> pallet. But, uh, oh man! But you do have an Oxen Ford Racing update for us, don't you? Yeah, we're another All weekend. Right. We got practice this week. Oh sweet! You gonna make it out there? Yeah. Car's gonna make it on the track. Yeah. Awesome. It's How you feeling long, about it? It's gonna be a long week, but it's gonna make it. Yeah. I I had a bad day Friday, Saturday at the shop. Okay. We, we were mounting tires. Tires were a pain in the butt. Uh, mm -hmm. We mounted this one up, and it would never seal. Like, never. We couldn't get it to seal, so we flipped it over, and it worked. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Why does rubber do that? I don't know. Rubber's stupid. It, it is really annoying to work with tires. It's one of my least favorite things is mounting tires. Well, these are, you do this manually. Mm -hmm. No machine. Right. Just you and a pry bar. Just ring, ring, yeah. ring, ring. 
pretty much, right? Yeah. That sucks. I, yeah. It does. I'm you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of it though right it's part of it i'm teaching charlie charlie knows how to do it but i don't think he thought i could do it what why i don't think he thought i could do it because he's never seen me do it oh you know so i was like i'll i said watch this <laughs> watch this yeah yeah don't go getting too confident there chuck <laughs> <laughs> so Did it, it, you couldn't get it to seal. <laughs> uh, well, he is the one he mounted that wouldn't seal. Ah, there you go. Blame him. The the best thing was though we had one. You know the poop when they they seat on the bead. Oh yeah, we had we had one, and he's kind of tapping it on the side while it's and he goes poop, and uh, he turned very white for a second. <laughs> Scared him. Yeah, it got his attention. That one got his attention. Yeah, man. Tires can freak you out a little bit. That's a lot of pressure and all that. Um, yeah. A lot of things could happen. I mean, if you've ever read a story about a blowout like that on so a mechanic, I, was, it's I rough. witnessed one. I witnessed one. The guy died. The guy died, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, how much pressure was in the tire, too? We're thinking probably about 300 pounds. They they had it. They had a clip on Chuck at a racetrack. They clipped it on, mm -hmm. and the regulator was pegged. And it was using nitrogen. Oh, no. And it said, boom, boom. And then wow. parts of him landed in various places. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That's terrible, dude. That was, That's that such a rough thing. thing to witness. Yeah. So. Uh, Holy smokes! Was it somebody you knew? No, I didn't know him. He was uh, about six pit stalls down from us. In uh, this was a traveling series I was helping out with. In uh, we were in Lakeland, Florida. That track's not there anymore. But uh, mm. yeah, it was a boom. Check it like it. You, you should have heard. I thought it was a car wreck. I was inside. I was inside our race car putting in new seat belts. I don't know why mm. they picked me to do it. I guess because I was the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the smallest, but I was the youngest. So it's like Chuck, go in there and put the new seat belts in. I'm like, oh god, okay. <sighs> so my gosh, but what was the tire doing at 300 pounds of pressure? I guess I mean the only thing we can think is they were trying to seat the bead, mm -hmm. and they put they it wouldn't seat. The, yeah, they just kind of walked off. And when he come back, they said that when he come back, he bumped it. And when he bumped it, it. Man, I did see the rim way up in the air when I looked out the window. I seen the rim falling back down. But lucky the rim didn't hit, hit anybody. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt that I know that was heard for a while away. That's a bad deal, man. People get, I mean, like you said, people die from that. Yeah, the, he, he, they brought in Life Light, but it was, it didn't do no good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known some people who got injured from it. Never anyone who's who's had their life lost. That's terrible. I watched a TikTok. I think it was a TikTok yesterday. These guys, I don't know how the guy didn't die. They were, they did the whole deal where they light it with fire. Yeah. The tire, the rim blew up beat up messed up their shop there was pieces of tire everywhere and the guy was standing getting back getting back up <laughs> what i'm like how does he do that that makes no sense yeah the guy was like getting back up after it happened i was like holy cow how's he got all his pieces that's so scary man we deal with stuff like that every day too that's what freaks me out like who knows what, what a driver does out there on the route trying to fix something they think is an issue. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just I never knew what like, we're walking into. I don't even like putting air in tires anymore no. after that happened. Uh -uh. No, it's a terrifying thing. So, <laughs> it's a terrifying man, we thing. we got to change the mood of the show. Let's talk about Honest Abraham Lincoln.
Let's do it, man. We've got President's Day today. Happy President's Day to all you night shifters. Happy President's Day, Chucker. Um, honest Abe Lincoln, dude. Um, got got some got some factoids you didn't know about here. All right. Um, you knew that Abraham Lincoln was a wrestler, correct? Yes, I knew he was in the American Wrestling Hall of Fame. That's right. He is in He's the in the Wrestling Hall of Fame as well. Yeah. Um, he is. Um, let me just read a little article. I'll start reading a little article here from. It's actually on uh, the Olympic Games um, oh. from the Olympics.com. Uh, Abraham Lincoln is one of the most famous politicians in history, but is less known that he had an equally impressive wrestling career. That's right. Before the 16th president of the United States started grappling with the pol uh, with the political opponents, he was throwing down rivals on the mat. To some degree, it makes sense. Honest Abe was tall, strong, and boasted natural athleticism. As a teenager, he wasn't doing agricultural work. Uh, when he wasn't doing agricultural work, the Kentucky native competed in catch-as-catch-can wrestling, also known as catch wrestling, which is a tough hand-to-hand -hand version of the sport that was included in the Olympic Games, St. Louis, 1904. Um, catch wrestling is really difficult. Like, it is serious. Um, okay. So here we go. High school and college wrestling didn't exist in the 1800s, but uh, Lincoln was a county wrestling champion at the age of 21. Wow. After moving to the village of New Salem, Illinois, the owner of a shop where Lincoln worked called Denton Offutt reportedly put his gifted employee forward for local bouts as a way of promoting his business. That's awesome, dude. So, <laughs> so a local only... shop. Not owner. only was he a, he was a sponsored wrestler. That's right. That's right. This local shop owner sponsored him, tried to bring yeah. people there. He was like that day's um, Mattress Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Rumors of the six foot four grappler's talents began to spread and he was soon challenged to a match against Jack Armstrong, the local champion and leader of a group, a uh, local group of bullies outside the oh. shop. The story goes that Lincoln needed convincing, but eventually agreed to participate under the rules of side holds where either man could throw his opponent to the ground and a large crowd gathered in, in anticipation. Man, I got bush mouth today. During the match, the future U.S. president was enraged by Armstrong's underhand tactics, but held his ground and Armstrong eventually conceded, admitting that Lincoln was the better feller. The better feller. There you go. So it, the story goes on and on. I don't want to get into yeah. crazy, crazy. Okay, here we go. This is what I wanted to talk about. Lincoln went on to study and practice law before entering politics, but continued to wrestle and reportedly amassed 300 victories over 12 years. His only known defeat came at the hands of Hank Thompson during the Black Hawk War of 1832, where Lincoln was serving with the Illinois Volunteers. Um, as, a, as expected, he took the defeat with grace and congratulated the better man, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So Le Abraham Lincoln, two, 301. Wow. That was his record as a wrestler. 301. That's better than Ric Flair's. <laughs> That's pretty darn good, man. Um, That's pretty darn good. But how about he had his own personal, like, um, 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 what was, what was his name? How Paul Bear, he had like the Undertaker and Paul Bear, dude, yeah. <laughs> um, with the shop owner. The shop owner was exploiting uh, Honest Abe out there. So do you think, uh, you know, you've heard some of the rumors about Abe. Uh-huh. Uh, do you think he chose wrestling because he liked hugging guys? <laughs> Are you calling Abraham Lincoln queer? Um, I mean, there's rumors. There's pretty legit rumors about that. So I was just wondering if that was the sport he chose because it was a legitimate way for him to hug on other guys. I mean, give him a legitimate way to do the old five on two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Do the check their oil. You know, whatever. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, so what would his WWE name be? <laughs> Dude, that's what I was gonna ask you. Um, I put a slight bit of thought into it because my wife asked me today, she was like, what are you guys going to talk on the podcast about? 
And, uh, and I told her and she was like, well, what do you think his name would be? And, and immediately it, it came to mind, the emancipator. That's what I was going to say. It, Get out of here. It took like half a second, like the emancipator. Yeah, it sounds so, corner. dude, I'm, <laughs> we're, uh, we're a little bit connected. Helling, helling, helling from parts unknown. The <laughs> yeah. Six foot and he's four. even got his own pallbearer with him, Two like the minutes. shop owner exploiting him out there in front of the shop. Can you imagine what the wrestling mats probably look like? They were just a few old nasty mattresses they threw out front of the shop for these guys to wrestle on. Do you think they even had mats? I think they just made Maybe it not. on the ground. Probably it was probably dirt ground back then. Right? Like it was all still dirt roads. Still like dirt there was ground. no asphalt. I'm sitting here thinking, well, you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I'm thinking of like concrete sidewalks. I'm thinking all new school. They didn't no. have none of that, man. No, they had a dirt spot. This <laughs> yeah. is the dirt spot where we wrestled. Yeah, yeah. I'm the idiot over here thinking it would be exactly like dirt. it is now. Yeah. Go go down here. You know that dirt spot off Sixth Sixth Street? Yeah, we're going down there and we're gonna have a wrestling match. It's yeah. the Emancipator versus the Horseshoe. <laughs> because you know, you know the Emancipator is gonna be fighting the Horseshoe. Oh, absolutely, Horseshoe dude. Jenkins. <laughs> He's a blacksmith black from smoke. Arkansas. <laughs> No, the enslaver. The, the emancipator is going to be fighting the enslaver. No, that that's that's on WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, that's the WrestleMania battle. That's for WrestleMania eighteen fifty. So much foreshadowing, you can't even stand it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh man, a six foot four dude would be really intimidating back then. Yeah, because they wasn't that tall. They didn't build them that tall back then. No, that's something completely different. That's something completely um, extraordinary at the time. Yeah. Six foot um, four. Yeah, six foot four. I mean, that's a little intimidating still now. You think that's how they, like, settle problems in the cab cabinet? <laughs> how tall are you? No, I'll wrestle you. How big a boy are you? <laughs> He's like, I want to end slavery. He's like, I don't want to end slavery. So they're like, okay, we'll wrestle for it. And then he won. <laughs> and they and that's they how he rose in political power yes, so quickly. Yes, <laughs> yes they were they would have a debate and a wrestling match. Honest Dave wrestled his way to the top, dude. He wrestled his way to the top. <laughs> he freed all the slaves. Dude, I wonder what other presidents sports accomplishments there are. Like at the know. amateur level. I don't know. You know I mean, Trump, I hear Trump's a pretty good golfer. He's a good golfer. Um, let's see. Uh, w did a lot of cocaine. That's right. Um, That's right. If they made that a sport. Andrew yeah. Jackson was great at dueling. Uh, well, he didn't die, so I guess he's pretty good at it. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, what if we had a... Did, have we ever had a president they could sing i wonder you know bill clinton could play the saxophone yeah hey siri hmm? has there ever been a president that could sing really really well here's what i found which u.s presidents are the best singer? oh perfect thank you siri uh ulysses s grant um really Apparently, hang on. President Reagan and President Obama had some of the best speaking voices. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. So it's something about Grant being a singer, though. I wanted to try to find that. I can't find it. Did he sing the American Trilogy? I mean, it was popular at the time. Maybe it was in the land of cotton. Old uh, are not forgotten. Bill Clinton was known for playing the saxophone. I forgot about that. 
Richard oh. Nixon was a was an accomplished pianist. Oh. There you go. I wonder how he took his lessons. I wonder if he listened in on it. <laughs> Did he play by ear? <laughs> Uh, he he, he, he claimed to, to. recording. Could he just? <laughs> he was like a freestyle recording? rapper that writes them out beforehand. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so, um, speaking of Trump being a good golfer, he uh, and it's President's Day, so we got to talk about the guy a little bit. Um, he came out with a brand new shoe. Are they like Yeezys? Um, I'm gonna send them to you right now. I took a screenshot before the show because I really okay. wanted to show you are you going to put them up right here somewhere yeah i'll put them up on the screen for everybody okay. so here you go they're at they're coming for you coming at me all right dun, 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 dun. that's the ugly check them out dude are. what look man those are ugly <laughs> you don't like that's, them that looks exactly like the shoe an 80 year old would make i think they're cool <laughs> <laughs> you got the newest Trumps. So he gets this 300 and something million dollar lawsuit. And on the heels of that releases a brand new shoe line. Like nothing ever happened. Yeah. The guy refuses to take an L. I get that. But man, those shoes are ugly. <laughs> you don't like the big old T on the side of them? <laughs> I don't like anything on them. They look like. They look like they were spray painted gold. <laughs> it's like they got some Chuck Taylors spray painted them gold. <laughs> it's... Dude, I'd wear the mess out of those. Ah, not me. I would rock them, dude. I would rock them. However, I think they're like four hundred dollars, so not for that price. For spray painted gold, Chuck Taylors. I think for a limited time, he should sell them for like $45 or whatever. Wasn't he the 45th president? Yeah. Yeah. For a go, limited time, he make, should sell them for $45. I'd buy him for that. I'm going to go to Walmart. I'm going to get their <laughs> fake Chuck Taylors. I'm going to get a can of spray paint and make the same shoe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one guy in the picture, man, he's so excited to have them. <laughs> like, I got them new trunks. <laughs> he is really excited. I'll crop him into the picture too, for sure. I mean, that's just that's ugly. I love it. I love how the guy refuses to take an L. Everything I mean, rolls cool off his back like it's nothing to him that he just got sued for all that money. You know, we we talk about um, Hunter Biden and all his drug use, mm -hmm. but. Sometimes it's almost like Trump Jr. is like, what can I get dad to sell this week? Oh. Like he, he burns him one and he's like, dad will sell some tennis shoes. Dad, <laughs> you got to sell some tennis shoes, man. A social media company at one point, right? Or yeah. like what they wanted to be the new Facebook or new YouTube yeah. or something. And then they had the, uh, the NTFs or whatever you call them. Oh, yeah. NFTs. NFTs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They did that too, for sure. And yeah, it's whatever Trump first. Jr. can convince him on, right? Yeah, he's like, you know what, Dad? This will be really <laughs> cool. I'm going to go fishing while you put these shoes out. <laughs> so, okay, would you rather have a cokehead for a son or a son that pitches you terrible ideas all the time? I've already got a son that pitches me terrible ideas all the time, so I guess I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> not one that makes you invest millions of dollars though at least <laughs> no no it's just like dad you know what we all do? What? What? <laughs> charlie don't say that <laughs> he's like guess what i'm doing tonight i said what charlie goes, i'm camping out oh i said you're camping out he goes yeah I'm camping out tonight i said all right he goes and i'm gonna eat a fish <laughs> so he's gonna go catch him a fish and eat the fish and camp out in the backyard. That's his plan to do tonight? Tonight. That's awesome. I, it is awesome till I come pulling up this morning and, in the morning and forget that he's out there. And he goes, <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> then I run back to Peachtree City. <laughs> you won't forget, man. You won't forget. You're going to be looking for him. Dude, you don't know, man. By the time I make it home, that 25-minute ride home, I can barely get out of the car sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, golly, I'm tired. I'm like, I got, I, I got to walk to the porch. <laughs> I understand the feeling. I mean, this is the, the world of the night shifter, you know? But That's right. That's right. We are in a different world. Uh, we don't, some people don't think we really have a job. That's true. Because That's true. People like night. when they, cause they don't see us at work. So they're like, Oh, you don't yeah. work. You don't work. Yeah. Cause we work when you're asleep. Yeah. Can't you do it during the day? No, I'm asleep. <laughs> I got up at eight 45 Friday morning. <laughs> cause I had stuff to do. Oh man. That's not and, much sleep. Uh, dude. I didn't do it. Any of it. <laughs> that happens, right? I went and got a tree. <laughs> That's so relatable as a night shifter to like, I can only get four hours of sleep because I've got so much to do. And then you get the four hours of sleep and do one thing. Yeah. You get up, you go, it's like you go get the tree and the tree, the people, they didn't start giving away trees till like 11. <laughs> so I'm like, man, I could have, but, but, but if you had slept till 10, you would have made it out there to like five o'clock in the afternoon to get the tree. That's true. And then you would have missed everything. That's true. That's true. Yeah. At least you got your tree and at least it's planted. I did change the oil on Mary Beth's car this weekend. Oh, which one? The Volkswagen that she yeah, drives? The, the Tiguan. Yeah. The Tiguan. Yeah. <laughs> you got, she's got two Volkswagens. I know. And every time I do an oil change, I had to go on line and watch a video on how to reset the uh oil change light. <laughs> you can't ever remember I cannot remember for the life of me how to do it on that car yeah yeah i've got to hit i've got to actually i'm glad you mentioned that i've got to do one of Catherine's car um she just hit fifty thousand. i sent you a picture of that rookies <laughs> <laughs> just breaking her in man it was 99 288 the other day Whoo, you guys are racking them up. And we bought that car, what, two months before you bought yours? Uh, I think so, yeah. I two bought mine months. in February of 2020. I bought mine in January. There you go. So it wasn't even two months. Yeah, I bought mine at the very end of February, the last day of February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then Interesting. Really Interesting. You've got double the mileage as me. Yeah. Wow. That thing don't stay parked. I know. You guys are always going somewhere, always canceling a vacation to go somewhere else. She's got to go in the morning. She's got to go to Sierra's because Sierra's is getting her wisdom teeth pulled. Oh, that's right. And she's got to drive her home and take care of the baby, and she's staying up there Tuesday night. Man. Good luck, Sierra. We'll be praying for you. It, it'll You'll get over it after a day or two. I hope there's a good video. <laughs> oh, man. With her, there's going to be. Oh, golly, there's got to be. She seems like the perfect victim. No offense, Sierra. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't she put seems me like under the perfect like that. Victim. She what? They didn't put me under like that. Did they put you under like that? Oh, yeah, I was out. No, I was there for all four of them. I was out of it, dude. Gone. Because I had my last wisdom teeth pulled two years ago. My last one. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think it it wasn't that long ago I had mine pulled, right? And and uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was, was out completely. I was awake for every every bit of it. Ooh, that sounds awful. It's not that bad. Ugh. Oh yeah, they had there. to cut mine out. So yeah, they had to cut mine out. Oh really? They still left you awake? So my first, so the way they did it was they did one side. Mm -hmm. When I was a teenager. Mm hmm. And then I went back and, and they cut them out. And I went back in a few weeks to do the other side. And they're like, we're only going to take one because that one's up against the sinus cavity and we don't want to mess with it, mess up your sinuses. And, uh, yeah, so I was awake for that. And then finally when we got around to taking the other one out, it had come in enough to where, you know, um, to where they it could would, get it. 
they could get it, and they just yeah. they just did it. You, you, they get in there with them pliers, and they're like, oh, oh, oh. no, just thank you, dude. Man. No, thank you. That sounds awful to me. That sounds okay. awful. We got to move on from that. I drove home. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Oh gosh, no, I couldn't drive. I was out of it, dude. No, man. No pain, no gain. <laughs> that's just not what my uh that's not what my dentist offered. Well, I didn't know you could get put out for it. <laughs> I All did. Right. Let's take an ad break. All right, let's do it, man. All right, John. So you have found the most Texas story ever. <laughs> I did, man. I did. It It was just, it happened to scroll across my news feed the other day um, when I was, you know, exploring the news. I don't do that often, but I was exploring the news and I found this article and here is the headline. His best friend was a 250 pound warthog. One day it decided to kill him. Bam. And uh, here we go. Austin Riley spent decades raising exotic animals in the Texas Hill Country. In a That's split second, thinking. the animal he thought he knew best changed his life forever. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, his name is Austin Riley. Not to be confused with the Braves' um, third baseman, Austin Riley. I thought that name sounded familiar. I'm like, it's yeah. a, a common, an uncommon common name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it says uh, in, Oct in October um, 2022 is when he was attacked. Um, he was stabbed at least 15 times with the uh, tusks of this, wa of this uh, warthog. Um, it's just a brutal, I mean, imagine that kind of brutal attack. Um, and it was for no reason, apparently. Imagine that for no reason. Imagine, imagine Theo because Theo looks more like that than he does a pot belly pig, which he is supposed to be. Sure. Um, imagine, and he's got naturalists before, that's why he don't get to get out and roam. Really. And he's got tusks, right? Oh, dude, he's got tusks. Yeah, yeah. Imagine getting stabbed 15 times by a 250 pound hog. Mm. I wonder if he weighs 250. You want to weigh him? How are we going to weigh him? Yeah. You can, you can pick him up, we step on a scale. Car, put him on the race car scales? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking about feeding him some Benadryl and trimming off his tusk. Oh, that's not a bad idea. You think it would work? I gave Zeus a Benadryl the other day trying to get him to chill out, and he wouldn't. <laughs> it did not affect him at all. Well... You know, some dogs, like, for whatever reason, have tolerances to Benadryl. I don't know why. I've heard it before, though. Benadryl doesn't always work on dogs. Well, I don't know why they don't. Zeus? I don't know, man. He's I don't know. Man. I'm not a vet. <laughs> that would be a terrifying experience, though. You've Your best friend, you've raised it. So this warthog, I read the article, and he raised this warthog from, like, a tea tiny little baby. Yeah. And uh, it had been his best friend for, I think, 10, 15 years, something like that, they said, yeah. forever. And uh, boom, one day. Dude, it's a wild animal. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know, man. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Yeah. <sighs> Excuse me, y'all. Bless you. It's Tis the season. Yeah. Um, I think I like the octopus the most. Mm. It fascinates me the most out of any other animal. What about I you? Like What's your favorite animal? Meerkats. Oh, yeah. We, you mentioned that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, what, what makes meerkats your favorite animal? They're so attentive to what's going on. Their, their situational awareness is on point. You just like that about them. I do. I do. Did you watch every episode of Meerkat Manor? I didn't watch every episode, but I did watch. I mean, you watch one, you've watched them all. 
<laughs> I mean, all it is is them going. <laughs> One alerts all the others, and then they all come yeah. out and stand and then, guard. <laughs> I mean, you watch one, you've watched them all. <laughs> it happens every episode. Every episode. There's nothing new. I mean, I don't know how they made a season out of it. More or less, however many seasons they were on. <laughs> Just the background music alone. That's that's it. Like they yeah. build an entire TV series off of background music and, and the narrator and you're standing at guard. Yeah. Yeah. What's a different way to say that there's a predator approaching? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I got that's to so see him live and in person though. Where where were you again? Uh, at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Oh, they've got them there, huh? Yeah, so they've got um, they've got them there, and you're at eye level with them in the the way they got their enclosure set up. Oh. So you go down this kind of this tunnel, mm-hmm. and you come out on a deck, and when you're on that deck, they're basically eye level with you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, are they all like alert to you? Is oh, there a bunch yeah. of them standing out there? They're all just standing there doing their meerkat thing. <laughs> yeah, how happy did that make you? It made me very happy. It made me very happy. I'm like, these are cool. They're like, we got to go do something else. I'm like, yeah, but they're meerkats. <laughs> Is that what made it the happiest place on earth for you? At that moment. In that moment, yeah. In that yeah. moment, yeah. Man, Walt knew what he was doing when he built that place, huh? Yeah. Giraffes are pretty cool, too. I've never seen a giraffe in person. I have. They have them down there. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty neat. They're tall. Yeah, I'll have to check that. yeah. You know, I like what they do to trees. What they do to trees? Yeah. What do they do like to trees? If, if they're in a tree, if they're in an area where there's trees... Those trees are perfectly manicured to where you can just sit out there and look through them. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they eat all the undercrap, huh? Yeah. All the stuff that's not going to grow that well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was a tree that dad had after we cut the, uh, uh, had all the wood cut off the property. I'm like, oh, cool. You got a giraffe tree. <laughs> yeah, it was all trimmed up. Like, one that was on the African Serengeti, you know, all trimmed up and stuff, except for the top. <laughs> That's, That's right. Now that I, now that I think about it, that is kind of they're all kind of eaten to the to the very top, huh? I should go to, um, I should go to like Africa on a safari. You should, like, not to kill anything. No. I feel bad about killing them. Um, you know, because I'm not going to eat an elephant. But, dude, have you seen those close calls with, like, the lions when they start going after some of the safari vehicles? Yeah, but you're in a vehicle. You can drive. Yeah, but they get so close to some of those people on, like, the top and stuff like that. They're oh, trained. man. They're trained to do that. Oh. <laughs> it's a experience. You say that. That's a big cat. You can't control that thing. Dude, I, I guess I'll just stick to Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Animal Disney. Kingdom with the uh, with the tranquilized big cats, that's probably the way to yeah. go. Well, the, I'm pretty sure they keep all those cats doped up, right? The way they do it is you go through the, the, the like, safari tram tour thing, mm-hmm. and it feels like the, the enclosures are, are open to you. Oh. But from your point of view, from your view, they are open. But from their view, there's walls. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, that yeah. Disney magic. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, Disney engineers. Yeah. Yeah. They do things. <laughs> Some of that magic stuff. Some of that magic. Um, moving on on the notes here. Um, yeah. What do we got next on the notes, man? The conspiracy corner. You're supposed to bring it this week. I am. I am supposed to bring it. That's right. I thought about this a little bit, and I wanted to get your opinion on something. Um, There has been a long conspiracy 
drawn out. There's been TV series made about it, everything. That Hitler escaped the eagle's nest, that he did not commit suicide in his bunker. Um, what do you think? Do you think he escaped to South America? Do you think he, like his bones have never been found, right? Apparently, the, what was buried as his remains were not his remains. Right. Um, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding it. Um, there, we know there were communities of Nazis, still are, <laughs> completely white communities in South America, this specifically year. Argentina and places like that. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think he made it out? I think it is very plausible. And the reason I think this is because Tim Kennedy, I trust Tim Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And he went looking for him. Yep. And he presented some pretty good evidence. Like, he don't seem like the kind that would just do that to get his face on TV. Right. So he presented pretty good evidence that there was something to look at down there. Right. Especially yeah. in South America. I mean, there was clear evidence yeah. that, I mean, we know that a lot of Nazis, Nazi um, officers escaped to South America. Yes. Um, now they did. They There's did no question. debating that fact. That happened. They did question, was he healthy enough to do it? To travel that far. Mm. But uh, I don't know, man. You see some pretty unhealthy people making some odd travels. Sure. Even nowadays. I sure. mean, I know it wasn't as luxurious as it was, you know, as it is now, but I think if there's, if he was determined enough, he would make it. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? I, I think there was a way. Well, if you think, if he made his way through Africa, I don't know how it works. How, what the, I think he could get so, there pretty quickly, especially um, in a U boat or something like that. The 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 theory the theory is the path is he took from Germany through France to Spain, got on a U boat in Spain and went south. Okay, and, went to South America that way, probably yeah. docked in Brazil or something like that. Yeah, and went went by train to to get on the U boat. The U boat is where they say there would be the problem, him going in a U boat for that long. With his mm, that's where the health concerns arise. I've never been in a U boat, and I don't plan on being in one. Nah. Um, nah. In in the ocean, anyway. I've been in one, like at a museum, but um, yeah, it wasn't a U boat. It was one of our submarines, and uh, I hated it because I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, man. I think it's plausible. I think it's totally plausible as well, man. Um, there is a lot of evidence. I mean, just the not being able to, I, like, not having his remains really bothers well, Russia me. Russia says they have it. But the remains that they have are not his. That's what we've learned now with DNA testing. Right. So... Because yeah. Russia, Russia uh, were the ones that initially raided the Eagle's Nest, if I remember, like right. his little bunker area, right? Right. And the government actually has looked into it several times. Mm hmm So Yeah, they've sent it's it's been a CIA mission before, right? Yeah. To they, investigate some of this stuff. They've seen enough evidence to go, we need to look into this. Sure. Sure. Um I'm not saying they're always right, but on something like that, you would think, okay, they're not trying to cover up something. Maybe, or are they trying to cover up something? Hmm. Well, that's what, that's what, that's what kind of freaks me out is when, if you think that Hitler survived and then you add in Operation Paperclip, which is where we recruited so many Nazis yep. scientists to come over and help us with our programs, um, especially developing um, the nuclear bomb and things like that. Like, when you think, and, and Warner von Braun, be, he's the he was the head of NASA. He he was the yeah. founder, one of the founders of NASA, right? Like that guy was a Nazi. 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on. It, it, it kind of, that scares me a little bit to think that the Fuhrer may have been alive while we had all these people operational in our government. Well, and they could have said, look, man, um, he, what the Russians, they, they could have gave him clues. They could have snitched on him. Yeah. And it would make sense that they snitched on him. We're not prosecuting them. So we gave them immunity. Right. So it's like, yeah, y'all, y'all might want to go check out South America. So. You know what I um you have you have you heard of the uh community of Confederate people that moved down there after the after the yes. uh Civil War? Yes. There was like a uh there was this little commune of Confederate soldiers that moved down to Brazil um mm-hmm. after the after the Civil War because they did not want to they did not want to uh uh be part of the United States. Right. So they escaped right. down to Brazil. Yeah. So have you have you seen this about this is totally changing so it's kind of leading into the meme okay have you seen the officer that thought he was getting shot at and it turned out to be acorns hitting the roof of his car i read the i i saw the headline i read the headline that's it okay well then i'm not gonna send you that meme so okay <laughs> oh man uh let's see <coughs> gotta find a different one if you haven't if you haven't heard about it, just like search acorn drill. Yeah. <laughs> or acorn versus cop or something like that. <laughs> and and you can find it. All right. Um I'll have to check it out after the show. Let's see here. I think I will send you this one. All right. Oh, here it is. Uh, pulling it up now they are not dangerous if you raise them right i strongly disagree blonde women with chucky tattoos are dangerous no matter how they've been raised (laughs) yeah absolutely (laughs) that's a great meme man that's a great meme that's a yeah they dangerous dangerous I, I strongly agree. I like that meme. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one, man. Um, Want to do some quick shout outs real quick to the Eating Chambers YouTube channel. Um, yep. Got to shout them out. Um, Want to shout out all of our regular listeners, all of the new listeners, all of our YouTube viewers. We yep. love you. We mean it. it. Yep. Uh, um, you got any shout outs this week, dude? No, but I do want to talk about it is Lent season. Lent ends with uh, Good Friday. Not Good mm-hmm. Friday. No. Or does it? It ends Palm Sunday. Yeah, I don't know. Palm Sunday. Ends. I'm not Catholic. But Palm Sunday, we are encouraging all our listener, male listeners, to wear their best Hawaiian shirt to church because it's Palm Sunday and it's got palm leaves on it. That's right. That's right. There is no better Sunday to wear no a Hawaiian better. shirt to church. Um, I, I'm not doing it in a. I, I just think it'd be something fun. I'm not. Don't mean any malice by it or anything like that. Yeah, um, I think it's great, man. I'm behind it 100. percent I'm doing it. I actually no, I'm not going to be at church that Sunday, so I won't. Why not? Um, it's not this Sunday, is it? Palm is Sunday. Is it this Sunday? No, yeah, it's a lot the way yeah it's around easter right yeah it's the week before easter i don't keep up with all this stuff man um that's right that's right um i'm gonna be at florida at florida yeah i'm gonna be at florida (laughs) (laughs) somewhere somewhere in florida (laughs) so you're supposed to be doing an easter egg hunt in the in the sand this year are you uh because we're going from Saturday to Saturday or something like going that. From Saturday to Saturday. All right. Yeah. At Florida. Yeah. At Florida. <laughs> That's episode 132, man. In the books. What war? <laughs> there I love it is. this time of year. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. Thanks for a good show, Chucker. We'll see you later, dude. See ya. Thanks for listening, Night Shifters.